I'm Adam Higginbotham. I'm the author of Challenger, a true story of heroism and disaster on the edge of space. And here are five surprising things you didn't know about the Challenger accident. The first one would be exactly how complicated the technology involved was. The engineers who built it called it the most complicated machine in history. The shuttle was exponentially more complex than the spacecraft that took men to the moon. The technology was so far ahead of its time and so filled with challenges that the program took years to put together and then was delayed by years and years. One of the biggest challenges about the technology was the fact that NASA didn't have the money to do it in the first place. They asked Congress for $14 billion to fund the program, and Congress would only give them five and a half. So from the very outset, it seemed like an almost impossible task. The second surprising thing about the Challenger story is the real history of the O-rings that were the proximate cause of the accident. The joints between the segments of the solid rocket boosters that provided the shuttle with the bulk of its propulsion into orbit for the first two minutes of flight were badly designed from the beginning. NASA was warned about this again and again by the engineers responsible for building the rockets. One engineer in particular at Morton Thiokol, the government contractor that manufactured the boosters, had become very concerned about cold weather and its effect on the O-rings that sealed the joints. And he ordered up a series of tests at Morton Thiokol and those tests established that the material at very low temperatures was almost completely useless. And when the Morton Thiokol engineers learned about this, they tried to have the launch stopped, but they were overruled by their bosses, who turned a no-go recommendation into a recommendation to launch. The third surprising thing is that the entire crew of Challenger on the day of the launch thought that it was so cold that there was no way they'd launch that day and they all went out to the launch pad, got into the orbiter and strapped in, pretty sure that the whole thing was gonna be scrubbed. In fact, Judy Resnick, after she had strapped in, said to the other members of the crew, I hope we don't drive this down to the bitter end again today. Mike Smith, the pilot, was in fact so sure that they were gonna postpone the launch that day that he'd already made arrangements with his wife to have her and the children fly back to Houston so that they could get back to school even so, they were all still keen to launch. In fact, Ellison Onizuka, who was one of the mission specialists on the flight, called his wife late the night before the launch and said that he was really concerned about the cold weather. But he told her, they're sure as hell not gonna fly without me. The fourth surprising thing is that there were at least two attempts to stop the launch on the day that the accident actually happened. The first was the Morton Thiokol engineers in Utah who were responsible for designing the boosters, a group of whom organized a teleconference the night before the accident to try and present new data to NASA managers. But in the end, because of a series of commercial, personal, and institutional pressures, the managers at Morton Thiokol went against the recommendation of their own engineers. But then there was subsequently, the following morning, another attempt to have the launch stopped. Rockwell International engineers, who were the people who had built the orbiter in the first place, had seen over closed circuit television cameras all of this ice festooning the launch gantry. And they said, Rockwell cannot assure that it is safe to fly. But they too were overruled, and eventually the launch took place as planned. The fifth thing that people might find surprising about the Challenger story is that the famous incident in which Richard Feynman did his ice water experiment on camera in front of the Rogers Commission is misunderstood. Feynman is now widely believed to have discovered the problem with the O-rings and how they fail at cold temperatures. But in actual fact, although Feynman's experiment on camera was a fantastic piece of theater, the truth was that everybody on the commission already knew that the O-rings did not respond well to cold temperatures. And they knew that because a whistleblower from Morton Thiokol, Alan MacDonald, had already come forward and testified in a closed session about exactly what had happened and the way in which the Morton Thiokol engineers had tried to stop the launch in the first place. If you want to know more about the Challenger accident, please pick up my book, 